we're going to get a lot more people joining us. Cool. Hey, well, this is, uh, Pat Duran. I know. Pat Duran, we've got Shauna Peters. We've Hi, got, man. Jesus, we got all the awesomeness on here. Um, cool. Well, welcome. This is um, the space for falling together. Came out of uh, three weeks of Melanie being at my house and I don't even, I think it was just all this chaos conversation and just realizing that so many times when it feels like your whole world is falling apart, it's actually falling together. And I know for me, for sure, in the last three weeks for me with everything I've been choosing to create, um, to be a part of with the access team and the things that I'm choosing in my business and in my life, it has literally been probably one of the most challenging three weeks. It's been like going from middle school to university and choosing, you know, to stand back up and stand back up and choose again and be more and be everything I've been refusing to be. And well, maybe just a fraction of that or, but just a constant, like the ongoing adventure of choosing and, and not disintegrating. And instead of disintegrating, choosing something else. And, and just, but, but really too, like with all the chaos that we've been instilling and, and aware of, it's really the space of where, at least for me, and I'm, I'd love to hear Melanie talk about this too, but where my whole, it feels like the whole foundation of my reality is like just tumbling apart. And while that's really, really cool, and I get what it's creating, and, and, the, and I, I sense the future of that, and that's really spacious, it's also sometimes really not comfortable, um, tear-inducing, you know, all of those other things that are also real. So we really got to talking about that and, and Melanie just whipped out this phrase, oh, it's the space for falling together. And I was like, oh, that's a really nice way of looking at it. And then when we got to talking about it, she had all of these different points of view and, and awesome awarenesses actually about what that is. And so, so I'm just glad you guys are here and, and, and thank you for being here. And, and this is an open conversation and we're gonna sort of talk and amongst each other, but feel free to interrupt us at any time with questions or insights or, or any of that. Um, Melanie, take it away. What do you got on the list? Yes. Uh, well, I, one of the things I have is quite a lot of background sound. <laughs> the place I was going to do the call didn't, it didn't come together. So you'll have to excuse some of the background sound. But I was just, I'm so excited to see I'm all your so faces. On the, we literally just started putting this out there like two hours ago. We're so glad to <laughs> It's really amazing. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, it's the phrase that everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. Nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. So many things, so many lies that I've actually bought about myself and, you know, points of views that I've been functioning from and the creation of my body and my relationships and my life. Everything is just dissolving and going away. So it's, there's this incredible, you know, space, mm -hmm. which I think in the past, and I think Crystal, you and I had this conversation where like, let's talk about your business. And I was looking for it and I was like, wow, I can't actually find my business. It's as if it has disappeared. And you're like, well, does it disappear? Or is it just completely and totally different? And it was as if in all the chaos that I've been instilling into everything, it has dissolved the solidity and all of the reference points that I've been using for the creation of, of my business, of my life, knowing, you know, where, where this, I didn't even realize that there was actually a point in space that I was using to choose from. Right. And so all of that is disappearing. So there's this space of like, wow, that's really cool. And there's also the dissatisfaction element and the discomfort element of, Oh, I, I have nothing actually familiar in my in my world to sort of be standing on right now. So, you know, this the space we're falling together. To me, it's like, what what support can we give ourselves? What choices can we make? What can we actually be with each other? Where well, we can have more ease in the free fall of the space of total creation. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that. I mean, I I, we, I've said this to you, but to say it out loud to everybody else, like I didn't even know, like, like three weeks, well, whatever, about a month ago, um, you, me and Stephanie started doing this 30 days of financial awareness. And of course you always go into a thing with one idea of it and then you always come out with something totally different. And so of course, 30 days of financial awareness, the first five conversations were sort of about, were about that. And we got systems in place and I got bookkeepers on and now that's 
it's not taking care of itself, but I've got enough balls rolling that, you know, I'm in constant conversation with my bookkeeper. I'm making steps towards getting it completed. And then our conversations just really changed into, well, what we discovered is that this thing of financial awareness is actually more this thing of like, what are we creating as our future and what are we committing to with our life and what are, and, but, 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 so there was that piece, but the other piece of it was like, I had never invited into my life daily conversations with friends or, you know, co-creative beings, you know, you guys are, we're all kind of creating in our own little separate pieces of the world and at home alone in our apartments, you know, on our laptops. And so when I found out you were in Oregon, I'm like, come on up. And, and so you being here and having those conversations, I was like, wow, this is actually, it's so much easier to, to, to go through. I want to say to go through this or to choose and for things to fall apart when I've got I've got you guys, you know, around me and at my back and, and conversations happening. And that was a huge piece that I didn't even know I was missing. You know, like when we, when we talk about the question of like, who or what can you add to your life? Um, I always go, I went really linear with that of like, okay, who or what can I add to get this business program done? Or who or what can I add to, not to my life, like not to the, the great and glorious thing that is my life every day, you know, like that, that old thing, you know? Um, so that for me really opened up, that opened up so much of this, this awareness of really like the thing that makes my life so rich is you guys, is these conversations, is that, and then as everything's tumbling apart, you know, then it's like, okay, cool. So who can I turn to and just have them ask me some questions or, you know, who can I just go hang out with or who can I get body work with or, you know, so how many of you guys, how many of us are creating ourselves as islands? And everything that is, can we just train and create all that? Right, we'll give that pot of and shorts, boys and beyonds. I think it's so funny that we, we go to all these classes and we're more and more and more and we go, go through all this change and then we sit alone in the middle of our room while everything's falling apart and wonder what's wrong with us. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Crystal. I don't think anybody else does that. I think it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, that's a huge piece of what I want to share with you guys is like, if you're keeping yourself alone or separate, all the created walls of separation that you've installed to keep yourself, to keep your wrongness from the world, could we destroy and uncreate all that? Okay, right, wrong yes. that pop -pop yeah. choice, boys and beyonds. Well, and you know, something else, Chris, and I'm so, so grateful for that process. Thank you. <laughs> And another piece I know for myself, I was asking, like, I would really like to have the energy space and consciousness, you know, the way that I show up at classes, you know, the way that I allow other people to contribute to me at classes, you know, I've asked for that to, to add more of it to my life, but I haven't always necessarily made the choices. Right. It's a choice. Include people. I know. What? I'm, I'm not quite sure what I, what I thought, but it. I wasn't actually making the choices that would create it. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, so, okay. so that's something else to look at is like, how many of you guys, or how many of us are waiting for our life to fall together in a way that makes us happy when actually it's the choices that we make that create that? <laughs> so everything that is, everywhere where you're waiting, when you could be choosing something different, could we destroy and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pod, all nine shorts, boys and It's so funny because Gary's doing this telecall, come off, wait into create. And of course, again, there's this linear idea that I function from of what creation is. Well, actually, my life's a creation. The experience of my everyday is the creation, right? Like that whole thing of who I add and what I add is the, is the creation of my life. And I, you know, even just Melanie coming up from Oregon to my place was like this, oh, I can do that. Sure, that. You know, and you want to, I don't know if you want to talk about that at all, but that was even just like, oh, wow. Like I didn't had no idea how much this could add to my life and how much being together where two or more are gathered can actually change things for us at epic speeds. And we have support while it's happening, right? Like, and I don't, I didn't even get that this call was going to be about this, but I think it's so funny because it's such a huge Well, piece. you know, it is a huge piece. And what, what actually comes up in my awareness when you say that, Crystal, is, you know, so often we have this perception of falling together means that you are in your apartment you're sitting there alone and all of the thing all you gotta journal every, about it and <laughs> well everything is coming you're falling together like well no i have to actually be here because everything is suctioned toward me because i'm now this vortex of everything falling together into me and what that choice 
was actually for me, you know, to be in Oregon. And you go, hey, why don't you come up to Vancouver? You're so close and create. It was actually me choosing toward everything falling together. Somebody had to uh, flip on a light switch at the cafe over my head. Sorry. Move your arms wildly. <laughs> there, no, I am the crazy person in the cafe. Well, what? A, what? But, yes, but it was yeah. that. Like, yeah, that. My choice to actually go when things are falling together, it isn't actually something that's passive. It's something that you step into, and this is something I've I heard Gary Douglas talk about. He's like, receiving isn't a passive thing. Receiving is actually stepping into everything that you're creating, everything that you're asking for. So everywhere that you're waiting for everything to come to you and fall into you, rather than actually make the choice and follow the energy of what matches the life that you would like to have and step into and be a part of, you know, you are actually meeting and it's a coming together of what you're looking for. Completely history and create all that tons of gods. Yes. And you probably do need to hold your microphone up just so you know. I know you need both hands, but it was it's so good when you hold it there. Like, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah. Does anybody have any questions about this or anything? Yeah. Um I was gonna say something brilliant and it left. So and also if uh, you're trying to talk and you can't, it's because you're muted. So I'll go along to the bottom of your screen and unmute <laughs> You would like to say something. You would like to say something. You're going to have to. Oh, well, that was actually what, one of the pieces I was looking at while you guys are getting your questions together of um, in the last three weeks with, you know, I've, I've joined the access team and I'm really, I'm co-creating a lot of the specialty classes now, especially right voice for you and conscious force, conscious writer. And I'm a part of what we're calling the hub action team. And all that means is that I get to play with like 10 or 12 really potent, intense individuals on the daily, which you would think would be great. And it's also like, if I don't fucking, Annie up if I don't get my and not get my shit together if I don't choose to be all of me like the potency that I am the intensity that I really am the bitch that I truly am in energetically I will get run over and what's gone on is that that un, I've had so much unwillingness to be that level of intensity in so many of these different conversations that there's my whole life I mean that's probably before my whole life right but my whole life that's been this area where I haven't been willing to choose and I've seen it as it I haven't seen it as a choice. I've seen it just as I get, I get to be made feel, I feel powerless. I can't do it. And there's these, and there's pockets of this powerless stuff. So as I've been choosing and as I've been moving forward, it's been like in my face of here I am feeling powerless again. And now I'm, I'm all of a sudden I'm at the effect of this really intense individual. And so, so seeing that going, am I at the effect or is this just triggering something that now I actually have to choose? So in that awareness of like, no, now I get to choose something else. And now I get to choose something else. I have had to call on backup. And I've, there's a number of times where I've messaged um, another facilitator and been like, can you ask me some questions? Cause like I'm either drowning or I'm choosing and I need some help. Like I actually need some help to get through this. And because the, because of what I've chosen where this is this ongoing process of creation, like there is no stopping by the side of the road for a year to get this sorted. It's like, no, we got to get this sorted now. This needs to change now. I need to choose now. It's really uncomfortable. Like now's the time. And um, so awesome and really uncomfortable and really confronting all at the same time. So I wonder, I wonder how, and, and what I get for me is that I've been avoiding making some of these choices because I knew somewhere that I was going to be confronted with choosing these very uncomfortable things. But as I keep choosing more of me to be more of me, it's getting easier. It's getting a little easier. It's getting a little easier. It's still really uncomfortable. It's getting a little easier. And I'm not dying, which I think is like the thing. It's like, oh no, that's going to kill me. Right. But I'm not dying. I'm still here. And, and, yeah, so everywhere you've been avoiding dying by not choosing, could we just try and create all that? <laughs> right, right, that's why like all these shirts always be up. <laughs> well, and you know what's interesting about uh, Crystal is one of the things that's come up, you know, for me, you know, historically with all the change that I've been choosing and, then, you know, more recently is am I actually willing to let go, you know, to actually let my own life die? Yeah. Well, the way that I have been functioning in the places that I have been choosing from and, you know, choosing pathetic or choosing powerlessness and being like, actually, that doesn't have to exist in my world anymore. 
Yeah. I, I can actually let it die and actually realize it isn't me that's dying. It's this, it's way this of being way in the world. Yeah. Exactly. Totally. So what I put a foot laying together is it's actually the aspects of you that you've been asking for, you know, that are also foot laying together as well, which it wasn't until this moment that I have really ever looked at it that way. Me neither. And actually, I'm really glad you said that because I was just in the bathroom this morning and I was like, I was last night and tonight for me have been this incredibly confronting thing with this, this area of life that I haven't chosen to be like, I'm working with somebody now who brings this up in me all the time. She will bulldoze me in a second. And up till now I've been trying to manipulate it with doing this pathetic thing, but it's getting, it's, it's last night. It got to a point where like, as you know, I, I had somebody ask me some questions and like, is that working anymore? And I'm like, it's not working. Well, what would you rather choose? I'm like to tell her to fuck off and that she's being a dick, you know? And so there was just this really matter of fact, like energy in my world that I was not choosing to be with her. And so as I looked at that, I'm like, what is it that I'm afraid will go on if I'm that with her? Um, so I just started doing all the insanity lists, you know, like, well, she won't like me. Well, I'll never be able to work for access again. Well, it'll destroy our future. It will mean she's never my friend, like all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, would you be willing to lose all of that to be you? And so in today, so that choice is now working its way through, I can feel it working its way through my world of like all the, what I've decided are ramifications that are actually just the disappearing of an old way of being into this new way of being that is really undefined. Like, I don't actually know how this is going to show up in different situations. It may mean that uh, people think I'm more bitchy than I ever, it could mean, it could mean my worst fears that people think I'm the horrible monster. And it also could mean something totally different. And I don't know yet because I haven't chosen it yet. It hasn't shown up yet. I don't have that as a reference point. This is not something that I've ever chosen to be. So I wonder how many of us are waiting to choose to find a reference point that makes us comfortable so that we know that when we choose this, we're going to be okay. And everything that is, all the reference points, connection points, and stability points holding that in place, can we destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. I have a question before I leave. I'm okay. Leaving. So what if you were really blunt? And what if you did just say, like, everything? Like, what makes, what, what stops you from doing that? It's different every time. I would say it's just different every time. I don't know if I can even answer that. What stops you? Well, yeah. Um, uh, well, what stops me right now? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> um, well, because I was listening to something that Gary said, and he said that uh, um, the words that you say, because like I say things all the time, and I don't even think about what I say, and people sometimes get really insulted, <laughs> which <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I'm like, I don't think about what I say, but I think Gary said something in a telecall, where he's like, um, yeah, the words that you say will create that energy. So you might want to like, you know, think about what you're creating. And then, so maybe, um, when it comes to people who like, for example, like come to my place, but they actually really want to like uh, sell me something or not even like do an exchange or do any gifting or receiving and there's none of that there. And I do feel like saying, well, fuck off or like, like, uh, don't like waste my time or why would you come into my place? If you, you know, you're, you're trying to like tell me something different or there's something different there. Like, I don't say anything because I'm like, well, let's just do this exchange kind of thing. And I don't know if that creates more but I don't really say anything. Well, in any, in any exchange, and even in mine, like cho first choice will create awareness. So let's say you say something or you don't say something, you're going to get an awareness from that. Choices also create your future. So that's something just to know. It's like, and so like, again, my awareness around this one person, like I could not ask any questions and just flip out on her and I will get awareness from that. I haven't chosen that yet, but I'll get awareness. I don't know what that'll create. I could also look at the situation, give myself some space and ask a question of like, what can I say here that will create what I want to have? So if it's ease that I want to have with this person, you know, what can I say here to her that will give me that ease? Oh, actually one time I didn't even say like something happened and I didn't say anything. And I was at an exchange with you guys and you were like, well, not, it, it wasn't you, but um, someone was like, well, why don't you just say, hey, the, the, um, say something. So I did, and the, the person was like, like, they couldn't hear it. Like, they couldn't, nothing is going to change, even though I did say something. 
Cool. So what awareness did you get from that? Um, well, even though I, yeah, even though I said something, I'm glad, well, I was able to say something. So like awesome. that's the awareness that I had. I was like, well, sometimes it doesn't matter what you say. Like you could say something very nicely or you could say. Well, and the thing is like, this isn't actually a conversation about saying something or not saying something. This is actually about what can you be that will create what you desire to have. So sometimes that means saying something. Sometimes that means not saying. It shows up differently all the time. So this isn't really, if we get really linear about this and go, well, the right thing to do is to say something and the wrong thing to do is to not say something, then we're talking about something totally different. So actually what we're talking about is what can you be that's going to create what you'd like to have. And as we're being like, as you move forward in your life, I don't know how many of you have noticed, but the demand on you to be different or to be more or to be something you've never chosen before shows up. And that's when it tends to be like, Oh, really like <laughs> to have this business that I want to have to have this life that I want to have. I now I'm now confronted with this choice that I get to make of like, Oh, what can I be to have that? What is required to have that? What choices can I make to have that? Well, and you know what Crystal is interesting. One of the reasons that I've kept my life so little is so that I wouldn't actually have to be interfacing with so many people. Where I would be in these different situations where I would actually be called upon right. to deal with somebody totally. who was using a lot of force or someone who wanted to make me wrong or I would just keep my life so little. So small that you don't have to deal I, with people. I could manage and I could control it and I wouldn't have to deal with people like this act. Totally. So everywhere you've been keeping your life really, really tight so that you don't actually have to choose from the array of energy, space, and consciousness that you actually are. Will you please destroy and then create all of that? Tens and gods, yeah. Remember, I'm going to bed, bottom, buckle, nine, shorts, boys, and beyond. So, this is another, you know, this is another piece. So, we talk about an access that we are infinite beings. We have infinite choice and we have infinite energies that we are aware of. So, what you're talking about, Chris, you're like, you know, should I, should I say fuck off? Should I be an energy that's bitchy? Shall I be an energy at that is pathetic. Shall I be an energy that's potent? Shall I be an energy that I mean go on and on? So often for me I haven't I haven't been categorizing those particular things with different energies that I am as an infinite being. But we are every single energy and every single choice. So everywhere you've also been limiting your choices or limiting your awareness of the choices you have so that you don't actually have to choose. Will you please destroy and I create all that times it gets in. Yes. I'm so glad you said that thing about keeping our lives smallest so that we don't have to deal with people because that was that that put words to the oh shit moments I've been having over the last three weeks of like what the fuck have I been choosing? Like I don't want to work with all these goddamn potent people. Like they're not totally conscious and what the fuck did I get myself into here this isn't as easy as I thought it would be like all these oh shit moments of like it was and and um in some moments wanting to go back to to my I'm gonna call it my small life but my life that was simple it was like it's me in my fucking bedroom creating my business with a few people that I hire and get to boss around you know like I call all the shots <laughs> and here I am in the fray of creation with like all of these other people that are making that it's I'm, I'm uncomfortable I have to choose things that I don't haven't wanted to choose before I, I'm just it's confrontive and there's been so many moments where I've given myself I've looked at it and I've been like well I can choose something different here like I can I can I can go back not that it would be going back but I can I can choose to just to just create my business I can choose this direction I can choose this direction and every time I would look at the energy the space that is the choices I'm making right now is so expansive and it's so oh matches my. everything I've been asking for. And so I, so I just keep choosing. I'm like, so, and that's also something to look at is like, would you be willing to choose what matches that lightness and that space that you know is what it is for you? No matter if it's like, because uh, it, it is totally undefined and it shows up in very random, unexplainable ways and and when you do keep your life that small and you don't add and add and add then um, the universe can't contribute it in all the ways that it knows it can you know like I'm receiving things and people in my life that I had no idea even what could ask for just by following the energy just 
you know, so I have something interesting. Yeah. That just popped up. So, so is Donald Trump actually willing to have a big life? I don't know. Is, is he willing to influence a lot of people? Is yes. he willing to have a lot of balls rolling? Is he willing to be any energy? That's Yes, he is. So are you all willing to be Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> so everything that brings up, times of God's you know, we destroy and uncreate it. Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pocket, nine, trust, boys, and beyonds. Because I know for me, it's like, I, I haven't been willing to be those energies. And I look at somebody like that who's willing to do whatever. No, will he do un- anti-consciousness? Yes. Does he do unconsciousness? Yes. Does he do destruction? Yes, he does. But he's willing yep. to do whatever. And I was like, you know. And consciousness what? includes everything and judges nothing. Consciousness includes all of that. Exactly. Including exactly. you choosing that. Like consciousness includes you choosing unconsciousness, you choosing um, anti-consciousness, you choosing. So what energy, space, and consciousness can we in our bodies be to be the anti-conscious, unconscious, evil fucks we truly be? And I'll explain that. Everything that is, can we destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, shirts, boys, and Now that didn't have a lot of energy on it. But where I was looking at that from is like, there are all of these like, what Melanie was talking about with Donald Trump, it's like we look at a guy like that and we're like, I would never, I would never be that. So where are, where are your I would nevers? So what if you are the ones who are on the creative edge? What if everyone else is actually looking to you to be the demand of you so that you know that it's actually possible? So anything that doesn't allow you to know me, perceive, and receive you know, what that is, and to be able to be the demand of yourself, and also the allowance that will allow you to actually choose greater, will you destroy and uncreate all of that times in God's land? Yes. I'm going to put on a pocket on my insurance point in advance. Cool. Does anybody have any questions or anything that's coming up for you? Hey, Shana. <coughs> hey. <laughs> um... I just have that, um, lately I've, I've realized that I was, oh, for ages, I would always try and be nice and not really be that bitch because then people might not like me. And lately I've had to do that more or I've been choosing that more. And I was so sure that being a bitch would create less in my world. And it, it's not like, <laughs> like the other day I, I, I was a, a, a don't think I think I did it in a nice way but I was a bit of a bitch <laughs> and it, it did create more like all of with my business like I think if I if I kept playing nice I was making myself this little graphic designer and I stood up for myself and it created more and then I made more money and then I it, it was it was totally the opposite of what I thought it would be <laughs> totally but, yeah, well, and I've noticed that too. Like the more I've been willing in the last three weeks to just be the center, because it's not, I'm not changing anything outwardly really with a lot of the stuff I'm posting on Facebook. In fact, I'm posting less on Facebook, you know, like, and I've gotten more requests for private clients. I've gotten more sessions. I've received more money. And like, and it's, it's like, it, it's ex- exponentializing. My, cl- my pod is really big. I'm like, the only thing I've changed, which this is the thing I want, the only is I'm being different. I'm just being different. I'm willing to be, and it's, and I find that I'm choosing more every day. Um, as I'm in these creation situations, like I, I, I choose or die. <laughs> I either have to choose or I get run over. Yeah. So cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, well, and Gary talks about a lot. That's all he talks about is like you, how to become, how to become money, how to become money, not how to create money, how to become money, how to become money, being being, being, what can I be that will create this with ease? What can I be? What can I be here? What can I do here? What can I be here? Right. And of course like, we don't get it till you get it. And I feel like I still have about that much, but it's like yeah. in, in every 10 <laughs> seconds of like, what can I choose? What can I be? I've, I've got more and more lately. Like <laughs> every time I'm trying to create money, it just doesn't happen. And then I just stop and I be, and then it just comes, comes, comes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah cool um hey hello hi oh hey um could you talk a little bit about demand what would you like to know um like 
how to create how like how do you create more of a demand because like uh like when i was creating things for my business and things that i would like to create and the life i'd like to create um i have played with demand and it's kind of interesting because like as like i i can get what i would like so how do you be how more of a demand? demand like how do you yeah well, it's interesting. Like demand uh, more money or business or whatever, anything like to create more. Because I sat there and I was like, oh, I, I, I didn't create for a while anything. I just took like a break and I was like, oh, this is weird. I'm not creating anything. But what does it take to demand? Well, well it's it's that it's that for me, and I'm curious how it will come. Like for you, Melanie. Like for me, it's that space of like, okay, I'm choosing this. I'm having this. Now, what's it gonna take? I mean, that, it's that energy of like, when I post, I'll give you a great example of a recent example of like, when I posted my foundation pod, I've had many pods before and I've done my own foundations. Um, they have never grown like this one. As soon as I posted, I'm like this pod and I messaged everybody. I'm like, you're coming to this pod, right? Like you're coming. It was that energy of like, of course you're coming to my house. Right. And of course they were, they were flying from Calgary and flying from Ontario and fly, wanting to fly from England and Australia, you know, like, but it was that energy of like, oh yeah, we're having this. You're coming. Right that energy of like, there's no way this isn't creating. And so anytime that I've chosen anything, whether it's like, I just got invited to the seven day and I, you know, got a gifted some of it. And so now if I want to go to that, I'm looking at what it would take to create it. Cause I don't currently have the money to go, even though it's a lower price, I don't have it. So it's like, um, so all yesterday I was like, starting, I could feel the excuses coming and I'm like, well, this is fun. Like I'm actually excusing myself out of choosing this. So what would it take if I were going to choose it? The energy would be, Oh, I'm going to that. I wonder what it would take to create this amount of money in this amount of time. Cause I'm going, there is no, there's no room for, I'm not going like, I'm not playing with demand. I'm actually having it. And that energy of having it is what creates and it creates things very differently. Like it doesn't ever show up the way you think it will, but that it's that energy. Now I walk through the world with, and I post with, and that I am with, and that I just draw, you know, I'm pulling, that's a pull of like, okay, universe, show me, show me how this is going to show up. Cause I'm having that. And what do you like? How does that show up in your world, Melanie? Well, you know, you know, first of all, one of the things I, you know, want to, that I notice a lot of people misidentifying, you know, demand is a demand of you. Mm -hmm. It isn't a demand of the universe. It isn't a demand for money or your business or anything. It's actually you are, you're being that demand of you, that you choose whatever it takes, that you step into what may be uncomfortable for you, for you to be aware of whatever it is actually going to take to have it and be it and create it. But it's a demand of you. And, and like you were saying, Crystal, it's like there is no, you know, if and or but about it. And when those excuses come up, it's that energy of demand that goes, you know what? I'm aware that that's there and nothing is going to stop me because I have a demand of me to be everything that I am. I, for me, I also have a, you know, there's been a demand in my world too. Of like, I am not going to judge me. So to me, it's a choice. You know, demand is a choice, but it has the energy that's in it. Is, I don't know if this is the correct word to use, but it's unequivocal. Yeah. You know what? I am, I'm going to choose this. I am choosing this. This is what is going to be showing up in my life. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I don't know up. what it's going to take, but I have that demand of me that this be in my life. And what I've done with things that I know, like the, with this choice I'm looking at with this class, it's like, I'm aware that I might not choose to demand this of me. Like I'm aware that I could choose it and I'm also aware that I might not. And right now I'm choosing to not choose. But what I'm doing is I'm acknowledging that. I'm not like, I'm not making excuses about it. I'm not giving myself money reasons or anything. I'm just saying, going, hmm, I'm actually not willing to choose this right now. Cool. What else is possible? In the next 10 seconds, I could choose it bang it out. You know, I, maybe I want to choose a three days before to see how potent I am. I wonder, you know, I wonder when I'll choose it. But instead of going, I don't have the money for this and finding all the reasons why I can't do it. It's just, I'm not choosing it. So that's something, that's a gift you can give yourself with anything of like, you don't have to make yourself wrong for not demanding or wrong for not anything. It's just going, Oh, I'm just not choosing that right now. Huh? Yeah. And you know, demand is also an energy. Mm -hmm. You know, it, a lot of people are looking like there's a technique, you know, for <laughs> demand or a particular SOP move. There's an SOP move or there's a particular <laughs> question that you ask that, 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 that equals demand and it's actually an energy. 
You know, that's something that, you know, Chris and or, you know, we're meeting that on the call right now. So like this right here. This is the energy of demand. This is the energy of demand. I am going to show up on this call today with Crystal and everyone else who's coming. I'm going to show up and I'm going to be me. I'm going to say whatever it is that I'm aware of to speak into in that moment. And I'm not going to shrink myself or hide myself. And I'm actually not going to be concerned with what anyone else thinks of me or if I get it right or if I get it wrong. And we had a choice with this call. We had one person technically registered. We hadn't promoted it at all. It was like, okay, we could cancel this and refund the money or we could create something else. And she's like, oh, hey, what if we do this? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So we posted it an hour before and look, you guys are all here. So it's just a choice. All of it's just a choice. And it wasn't significant whether we canceled it or chose something different. But with this choice, we created something different. Cool. I wonder what it can show up now. What if your whole life was like that? What if there was no significance to any, any of your choices? It's just, oh, I've got that choice or I've got that choice. That one's funner. Let's choose that. I wonder what can show up now. Absolutely. And you know what? One of the, uh, one of the tools that I would say has been the most like, helpful for me is interesting point of view that I have that point of view. You know, with the space of falling together, nothing shows up like you think it's going to show ever. up. Ever. It doesn't. Ever. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. ever, ever. And it doesn't always look like it's going to be awesome as you're moving through it. Sometimes it appears to not be going well at all. <laughs> right? And it's like, cool, interesting point of view that I have that point of view. Interesting point of view that I have that point of view. Because at every point of view that I've been trying to insert into the space creates a solidification. Right? So how many of you are actually avoiding the space? Nobody on this call. No. Everything that is can be destroyed and created all. <laughs> right, wrong, good, bad, bog, bog, all in shorts, boys, man. Why would you avoid space? Space is so light. We like heavy. <laughs> heavy and dense well, are way more fun. Well, and you know, there are so many times when there's this point of view that if it isn't solid, that it isn't real. Yes. Right? So how many of you are looking for something solid and real to know what to choose, when to choose, and how to choose, rather than the spaciousness of choosing from an interesting point of view. And everything that brings up our let's do, oh, times of God's land, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. Right, wrong, good, and bad, bottom, pock, all night, church, boys, and beyonds. So, so do you guys notice this space? So what would it be like to actually just, you know, expand your awareness, like expand your zone of awareness out so that you can actually perceive the energy, space, and consciousness available in these 10 seconds? You know, notice where you want to stop yourself or notice where it might be uncomfortable and what if you just were gentle with you and you just, you know, push down those barriers or drop those barriers and just allow yourself to perceive into and lean into even more of that space. And notice where it seems like there might be nothing. And then as you notice that, gosh, it seems like there's nothing. Maybe ask, what am I aware of here? So what would it be like to be so out of control that you actually could choose from a space of possibility rather than the solidity of this reality's version of possibility? Everything that doesn't allow that, we destroy it and create it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And that last three minutes, however long that was, is a great example of me choosing to be aware. Nothing was coming out of my mouth. I could have forced something to come out of my mouth. I'm on a call where something should be coming out of my mouth. I'm like, nothing's coming out of my mouth. I'm going to just sit here. And then Melanie says, which, and then I, and then, and then, what if you were willing to live your life like that? Where it's like, I can't actually move forward in this area right now. 
I wonder where I can move forward. I wonder what wants to show up. And the more I've been willing to be that out of control, because that's not defined. That's not planned. We didn't write out our speech for this call. Like that's just really the willingness to be aware of every 10 seconds of this. Hmm, there's a hmm here. It's not me making myself wrong. It's just an awareness, just a choice, then just another choice, then an awareness, then another choice. So what energy, space, and consciousness can we in our bodies be to be as aware as we truly be? And everything that doesn't allow that can we just try and create it all. Right, wrong, you bad, pod, 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 land, shorts, boys and beyonds. And Ananda said here, as a child, I was told I was a waste of space. So bought that I'm not allowed to be the true expansiveness I be. Yeah. So everything that is, can we just try and create all that? Right, wrong, you bad, pod, 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 land, shorts, boys and beyonds. And I know for me, like a lot of what's unraveling with this whole order and chaos thing is all of the ways that I've ordered my world. And I really, for, <laughs> really thought I didn't do that that much, but that's it. Everything's the opposite of what it appears to be because it appears that I do it a lot. <laughs> and that's been really cool to look at, really uncomfortable and really cool because I'm like, wow, I try to order my business. I try to order the steps of my business. I try to order the steps of my relationships. I try to order my life. I try to, and order is different than organization. Organization is where, in your kitchen, you organize it in a way that supports the chaos that you are when you enter the kitchen. You know, where the colander is right where you can grab it and the spoons are right up here and the knives are right there because you know yourself and if they're not in easy reach, you're gonna be, you just gonna say fuck it and leave the project in the middle because you can't find the fucking knife and the cutting board, right? So you organize your kitchen or your art supplies or your, or your office in a way where everything's in easy reach so that it can support the chaos that is creation. So that's really different than ordering it ordering it is this control of like, okay, so I have this call I want to do. So I'm going to do this step and do this step and do this step and not actually asking any questions of like, wow, what does this want to be? When does it want to be? Who wants to be involved? Am I aware of the future? You know, all these questions that actually allow you to have awareness of what this thing is and, and create from that space instead of the order of what you've decided should be or that you've done before reference points from the past. All of those things are order. So what have you made so vital, valuable, and real about the order of a conventional life and living that keeps you from the chaos that could truly create it? And everything that is, will you destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, only in shorts, boys and beyonds. Could you run that again, Crystal? Oh. Yes. What have you made so vital, valuable, and real about the order of a conventional life and living that keeps you from the chaos that could create it? And everything that is, will you destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, only in shorts, boys and beyonds. And you know what? Uh, what Ananda was saying, you know, about being told she was a waste of space, and so she thought that she wasn't allowed to be the expansive. How many, you know, people? How many adults in your life, and how much of, you know, this reality has attempted at ordering you and the uh, the creative chaos that you actually are as an infinite being? So everywhere you've you bought into the lie, because no one can actually order you. Right, they can they can lie to you. They can project. And they can you know try to convince you that it's true, and the only thing that actually makes it true is when you buy that lie. So how many lies are you buying that are ordering you and not allowing you to be the space and the expansiveness and the chaos that you truly be? And everything that is time the gods and will you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Right, wrong, good, and bad, pot and pock, online, shorts, boys, and beyonds. And one of the things I noticed for me is that I was literally inviting people into my life who would order me because I had the point of view that I needed to be ordered. You know, so what have you made so vital, valuable, and real about the necessity of order that never allows you to have the freedom and the creative chaos that is actually available for you to be choosing? And everything that is times of God's land, will you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Right, wrong, good, and bad, pot and pock, online, trust, boys, beyonds. And can we do some like one, two, threes? Mm -hmm. So, like, destroy and uncreate the order that has literally been like put around the chaos of you that would actually allow you to be the space of falling together that you know is actually possible. Mm -hmm. Oh, and on three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
and on four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and on five, all the algorithms. Please, one, two, three, four, five, 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 and on six, one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 eight. <laughs> And for anybody who's watching or listening to this that doesn't know Access Consciousness, the, the threes, the fours, the fives, the sixes, and the eights are these energetic explosions that create and open up different things. Um, they are weird and, and not at all. <laughs> They're undefined, energetic, bah, done, <laughs> changed, <laughs> and they work. Uh, one of the things that Dane talked about in some of his classes is like, do, do 10 one, two, threes and one, two, three, fours in the morning before you go, go out and face your day and do 10 one, two, threes and one, two, three, fours at night before you go to bed and see what changes and shifts for you. And that's this whole chaos conversation of like, fuck, you know, we are actually, we function so much better. Like how many, when, when this conversation started rolling out, did anybody notice more ease in your body and simultaneously more discomfort? Did anybody have that? It was like, when I heard chaos, I was like, oh, oh, that's so great. And then I started applying it. I'm like, oh, that's so uncomfortable. Because ah. <laughs> there's two things going on at the same time, like all the order breaking apart and then all the chaos. It is actually the ease of you. Like if we were functioning as infinite beings, as horses, you know, we would just be aware and we would respond and we would choose and we would be and that would be it. And we'd eat our grass and then we'd walk and then we'd poop and then we'd, you know, create a thing and then do a thing and then do a th And with no point of view. And instead we've like created this whole system of being in the world that's like got to be a certain way. So all the created systems of order that are keeping you from choosing to be the chaos you truly be, can we destroy it and create all that? Might wrong and that pop all intro it's poison you. Cool. I guess everybody's like, Whoa. does anybody have anything? Any questions? You know, and I even wonder, it's like, you know, even on a call like this, sometimes there's a discomfort with, with just this face without any talking. <laughs> so I'm, this is, might be kind of weird, but what would it be like? Like if you have a question to ask, or what would it be like to be here for 30 seconds? Like what space have we actually created that we can be aware of that we wouldn't normally allow ourselves to actually pause and be aware of it? Yeah, yesterday I was having a bit of a moment and uh, I was letting myself get right into it. So I went outside and I like whipped myself outside to take a walk and I was crying and knowing what I was choosing. And I went outside and I walked around the, um, the second floor and our building has this sort of circular thing right next to the gym and nobody's usually out there because I didn't want to see any people. So I was walking out there by myself with my, my country music in my ears and, you know, like having a good cry. And the instant I let myself be outside, what I was planning on doing was getting into the drama. And I was ready to choose it and I was in it. And then I got outside and I got this air on my skin and I was breathing in all this beautiful Vancouver after rain freshness. And, I, and within like three minutes, it had changed. <laughs> I was like, oh, gosh darn it. I was really hoping to I have a good really tantrum. I was really hoping to have some good drama, you know? And I actually could have kept choosing it. That's what I was aware of is I could have kept choosing the drama. I could have like gotten rid of the music and kept crying. And, and what I chose instead was that to let the molecules and the air and the trees to contribute to me and to change it instead of like making it solid and making it stay, which is what I'd already decided I was going to do. I was like, oh, it can change now. And then it changed. And within like three minutes, I was going back inside and I was better. And I was doing whatever I was doing after that. But I, I noticed that so much because I, I so very many times don't choose to let other things contribute to me. I don't choose to let somebody else change 
change a moment for me, contribute some, a different energy into my world. I choose to stay in this moment, in this insanity. This insanity is my insanity. I'm key to this insanity. You can't change my mind. I'm unhappy. I'm crying about it. Fuck off. You know, and it's not always crying, but sometimes it's like business insanity or money insanity or whatever that track I'm running on and I'm going on it. I'm, I'm in it, you know, instead of going, what else could I choose that could change this? Who can I talk to? Who wants to ask me two questions that'll change it? What walk could I take? What other thing could I choose that would change it? Am I so happy that you brought that up, Crystal? <laughs> oh my goodness. I was like, oh yeah, we could actually talk about the things that we, that we do that actually shift. In there. And when we start to lose that sense of space, what can we actually choose to have it again? And that is such a key piece is that and that's really new for me in the conversations that you and I were having when I was in Vancouver you know talking about like building a team and adding people and people could contribute to calls that I have and contribute to my business um, I was like wow I'm refusing contribution yeah. refusing it so stepping out into nature and allowing nature to contribute but even bigger than that what if we actually allow the universe to contribute to us what if the every single molecule in the universe is actually rooting for you and it, it has your back and is available 24-7? And that there are, we, we know people all around the world, there's always somebody up, <laughs> right, to, to ask a question or, and being willing to, to ask for someone to contribute to you. So how many of you have the point of view? Well, and that you're not actually worthwhile enough to be contributed to. So that, everything that is, can we destroy it and create it all? <laughs> yes. The third choice of yours. As I, I had the point of view, it's like, but this is so silly and so stupid and everyone else is so far ahead of me. Everyone else is so much more conscious. People probably don't get locked up with this stuff at all. I'm a facil certified facilitator of access consciousness. I'm not supposed to have this stuff that's coming up, blah, 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 blah. And it turns out that none of it's ever true. And almost every single time that I've ever reached out to anyone, they were like, I'm so grateful that you called. I've been having something similar, or I just went through this recently. Um, and anytime anyone has ever reached out to me, it's always and every single time been a huge contribution to my life to get the honor and the privilege and the, the gift of contributing to something. Well, and the other thing, piece of that that I'm still getting over and over is that I'm aware. So this thing that I think is mine that feels so real is actually probably 2.3 billion other people's. So and that's very, the last question I often think of for myself. So we have this new tool that we're using in Access now called Who Does It Belong To? Dane just rolled it out the other day. He started using it himself. So, who, so the thing is, like, when you're dealing with somebody, something that feels so fucking real and true for you, and you do reach out to somebody else and that contributes to them, it's very likely they're not only dealing with it too, but the fact that they can ask you questions about it is going to contribute to their life because they're like, oh, yeah, I'm being insane too, but yes, I'll ask you questions. <laughs> and, and then that changes, you know, that space for everybody else as well. We're so aware. So what bastardization of your awareness are you using to create the, the island of unworthiness you're choosing? And everything that yeah, is. That. Right, right. Good bad call my insurance boys and beyond. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, yeah. You know, it's so funny. This was some... Something that I've been avoiding for a long time was to actually allow things to get messy. I was like, no, and they, that was some of the order that I was bringing into my life rather than allowing the chaos that can, can it seems, you know, it seems messy. I wasn't allowed to be perceived as messy. Yeah. I wanted to look like I had everything together, all of it. Um, not even exactly sure what my point is with that. <laughs> Well, I know for me, that's been showing, like, I really thought I was, like, the queen of the hot mess, because I was, like, so good at being out there with all my shit, and I'm, like, I'm, I'm a hot mess, and everybody knows it, but as I kept going, I realized that I'm doing hot mess, I, I am vulnerable in some areas, but there were these really tender, protected areas of my life that I wasn't even willing to show myself, 
of like, well, it's fine if I'm a hot mess dealing with emotions or it's fine if I'm a hot mess dealing with relationship stuff. But what's not fine is for me to, to even know myself that I actually don't believe, I don't believe in energy. Let's just let's put that one out there. Like I just have been, I just, that came up the other day. I'm like, I don't think I believe in this energy stuff. I'm a fucking certified facilitator. I talk about following the energy. You don't say that shit, right? Um, and until I was actually willing to let that come out of my mouth and, and acknowledge that that was something I had running in me, it couldn't change. Um, there has been a number of other things lately of like uh, believing I have to do everything myself. And that if you ask me to do it, I've got to get it done myself. And if you talk to me about that, I've got to be defensive because it's like, back off, I got this, right? Like, so there's this whole program running of like, I have to do everything myself. I have to do everything myself. And I'm sure there's even stuff underneath that, but like stuff like that, where it's like, that stuff feels so protected that I haven't even seen it until I've gotten out there, started choosing and it's come up. And that's mm -hmm. been really vulnerable to look at because in my world, it means I'm looking at like the core of my value on the planet. Like what makes me valuable as a person is my points of view about these particular things, you know? So those have been like, you know, I can't be a hot mess about those. I can't even bring those up because of what I've decided they mean about me. So everything that is, can we destroy and uncreate all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all in, truth, poison, beyond. It's like, what have you made meaningful about you that doesn't mean anything about you? That if you were willing to look at, claim, own, acknowledge, and bring into the light of daylight would actually mean freedom for you. And everything that is, <clears throat> can we destroy and create all that? Where yes. Bad, pop, pop, all in, truth, poison, beyond. Yeah. Well, wow, yours. Yeah, does anybody have a, a comment or a question or just, you know, an, an uh, uh, uh I have a question. Yeah. Uh, this is Cherie. Hi. Hi. Um, so, okay, I recently got to the space where I realized I was playing everybody else's in their realities in terms of what to do with myself. And I figured out, like, what my thing is, what my lane is. If that is a thing and I chose it and I got big and I chose it and I got big and I chose it but then it disappeared and I can't find it and I'm making myself wrong about it like was I wrong cool can I stop you, know, you right like, can I stop you right there yeah so yeah. one of the things that goes on is you're choosing these energies that you know are in the very beginning as you're choosing them they're new and uncomfortable it's like you can you can kind of feel it right it's like bah! right like you can feel it in your body and it's sort of uncomfortable and then you keep choosing it and you keep choosing it and then you can't feel it anymore what we tend to do is we we think it's disappeared but the thing is you can't feel something you be you can't feel something you be so truth are you being the energies that you were choosing oh <laughs> oh oh okay <laughs> So now you just I feel them. like yes and no. Okay, well, what I would invite all of you guys to look at with any of anything you've got going on around this is all the decisions, judgments, computations, and conclusions that you've made about this already. Can we destroy and create all that? Yeah. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys, and beyond. So let's just say, like, like with me, right, this last two weeks, it's been really intense. And now I'm being more in this 10 seconds. If I, and now, I, right now, I sort of still feel it. It's sort of uncomfortable. But I get, because I've been doing this for a while, like it's going to melt into just what I'm being. You know, I'm not even going to think about it anymore. Um, so I can make that really significant and try to hold on to that sensation. Or I can just keep going, okay, now what can I be? Now what can I be? Now what can I choose? Now what else can I choose? So is there, is there anywhere in any of your worlds where you've made, you've created a bar and like, because this is where you could never get to, you'd never, and then you got there and now you're like, well, now what? So anything that is, can we destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, yeah. bad, 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 bad. cool. And so what's, what's, what's there for you? Wow, um, I'm just confused right now, so. I mean, like you said, I, I thought I would never get there, and I get that what you're saying makes sense, but it's like, okay, if I'm being that, then exactly what you said, now what? 
Right. So now what, so what guess can, what, what can you talk about? Well, yeah, it's, it's, and this is that, this is the creation of your, this is the creation of your life. Like we've spent so much time surviving our life that that's been so time consuming that it's like, we get to this creation pieces and you actually, we don't, I feel like anyway, and Melanie, I'm curious about what you say, but like, I, I didn't have the creation muscles in place. Like I didn't know how to keep creating. I knew how to keep surviving and, and combating and that kind of stuff. So the, for me, the creation muscle has been something to, 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 it's been a muscle to grow, like, and to just keep choosing, right? Of like, okay, so I got here. Well, now what? Well, now what can I create? You know, like if I had a billion dollars, what would I choose? If I, what questions can I ask to expand my awareness of what's possible that would inspire me to choose more, to choose whatever that more is for me? Yeah, creation is a really interesting, it's always been a really interesting topic for me because I had the point of view for most of my life that I, that I can't create. I'm I'm not a creator. I actually am really bad at creating and really bad at it. Um, but I had so many points of views that were completely misidentifying. And I was making creation something based on this reality, not what I actually know about creation. So what have you what have you made creation that it isn't? And what is creation that you haven't allowed yourself to totally be aware of yet? To everything that is and anything that doesn't allow you to know be perceive and receive what it is that you know about creating and what it is that you would actually really love to create will you destroy it and create all that wrong and bottom pack on my insurance boys and beyond so for me there's also been this point where i would create something and i'd be like cool i'm done like <laughs> there was a period on the end of that sentence and i felt like well this is what I like to create. So once I actually did create it, I was like, you know, big exhale. And that's the end of the story. Mm -hmm. And rather than like creation is an ongoing process and that there isn't something that you have to create. It's actually what do you desire to create? What would you like to see in a world? And that there isn't anyone who's going to tell you what that is. And I've been waiting my whole life to figure out what is the thing? Mm -hmm. What is the like, what's my big creation that I'm going to get out into the world? And it'll, I don't know, be my signature creation. I'll be famous for it or, or whatever all that stuff is. But what if there isn't a right creation? What if it's a constant wondering and choice in your world of what do I desire the world? What do I desire to contribute to the world? Well, what I like to create, what would be fun for me to create? And that, that's a never ending question. And no matter what it is that we actually get to, that there's always more and that it isn't a wrongness, but it's actually a constant expansion, energy, space, and consciousness of us. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you. Like, I feel like everything shifted. Like, I get it. I, I don't feel that confusion anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm having awareness. Thank you so much. Cool. And Jen says, my awareness is that I'm following the energy to quit my job and move to another state at the end of the month. I have no job lined up for when I get there or a place to live. I've been fearing the chaos that I truly be or that this is creating and how this is going to contribute to a totally new life that is nothing like what I could have imagined. I'm now really excited to see what will be created in this chaos. Thank you, ladies. Cool. And Kirk said, I spent the last two days with my friend Ivan from the COP showing him the order and chaos of the redwood grows here in Marin. Ah, cool. Wow. I love you both. That's awesome. Yeah. So my encouragement to all of you would really be like, as much as you can tap into this conversation of order and chaos and, and get yourself to a pod of the rewrite of foundation and bars foundation, if you can, because um, this, this conversation is changing everything really. It, it's, it's just, it's really, it's making so many things easier. It's also, you know, creating a lot of discomfort and making things easier all at the same time. And what I'm really seeing as a future with, with all of this is that creating as me is getting easier, you know, cause I actually am chaotic. I am the ease of that. I, I have all these capacities that, you know, when I'm really willing to be me create magically and so cool. 
And thank you. This call, uh, Sarah said this call is awesome. I'm so grateful for you guys. Holy moly. Thank you for your vulnerability and magic. Thank you guys for jumping on. So this is the chaos you be of like seeing a last minute call, jumping on it, coming in, not knowing what the F and, and being here anyway. And so we're so grateful for you guys too. And, um, yeah, stay tuned for what's next. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you for everything that you are, that you guys are already being, that you probably aren't even acknowledging. Mm -hmm. You know, you're being so much more. So what, what are you that you haven't been acknowledging that if you were to acknowledge it would allow you to have so much more ease with the space of your life falling together? And anything that doesn't allow you to know, be perceived and receive it, yes. will you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Right, yeah. wrong, good, and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. It's like this is it. Like we are actually doing it. We are actually being it and having these conversations and the willingness for your vulnerability and our vulnerability and to just share what each one of us is knowing, whether we're saying it verbally or we're energetically, you know, being the presence of us here together, like this is it. And what would it take for even more of it? Right. Yeah, baby. So, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you guys Bye. soon. <laughs>